everyone. I am Tammy Davis and really appreciate you being here with me. Um, I'm trying to get my, my senses together here. If you'll bear with me just for a few minutes as I get through this. Um, it's October 2nd, 2017, depending on when you're watching this. And um, it's been a rather tragic day here in the United States. Um, our largest mass shooting and my heart is with those who um, are suffering, whether they be the family or the victims, and as well as um, the fact that I just found out that Tom Petty has passed away. So I'm a little bit, um, how do I say, kind of um, just kind of feeling everything, I guess. But at the same time, I also wanted to talk today about yeast. It <laughs> sounds like a really interesting topic, doesn't it? And the reason I'm bringing it up is I've talked about it in prior videos and um, when it comes to estrogen and histamine and yeast. Um, but what I wanted to also address in this particular video, <clears throat> more importantly, is that yeast, systemic yeast, actually, they've, they're finding that it actually they're finding it in, in all tissues. It's, it can be found throughout the body. It's not just in specific areas like we've, you know, we've, we've gotten used to hearing about, such as in the mouth or in the vaginal area or um, even in uh, urinary tract. It's, it's, it's found, can be found throughout the system. And oftentimes, you may not even realize that it's specifically yeast that's causing you difficulty um, because the, the fact is is that with high levels of yeast you have histamine and then estrogen and so there's a various number of schools of thought that say well one chemical causes the other one to increase and from what I've discovered in my work and um, research is that essentially the body is unable to, we always have some degree of yeast, just to start with that, in the system. Like we have bacteria and we have viruses. I mean, we live on this planet and it's just a part of being, being here. It's a part of our existence. We are nature. Without question, we are nature. And so therefore, we are hosts to various things. And one of the things that I've been working on um, with some another client and is that he is actually, um, he raises bees. And you're more than likely familiar with the fact that um, the, the, light, the, light, the life of the bees is currently being threatened by a particular mite. At the same time, well, let me back up a minute. Honeybees, were, these mites were actually living kind of in harmony with a sweat bee over in Asia. And it was the introduction of the honeybee into Asia that um, exposed the honeybee to the mites. Now that said, you know, there's, so there's a lot of talk along those lines. And I realized I said, this is about yeast and we'll get there, but I wanted to kind of illustrate a point. So, you know, even though the mites were, were only found with sweat bees and through the introduction of the honeybees to Asia, we, we've now come to find out that these mites are um, affecting and they're causing harm. They're bringing harm to the hives because they are um, influencing or um, bringing about a virus in, into, the, um, into the hive that's infecting the worker bees and, I, and, and the drones and, and, and the queens. So we have a problem. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. At the same time, one of the things that's been established is that these mites in small numbers can exist in the hive alongside the bee without problem. It's just when there's some changes that are occurring within the bee system that are um, reducing the bee's ability to sense the presence of the mite pupa. Therefore, the bee can no longer um, eliminate some of the pupa. 
it, it actually, it can't eliminate, it can't sense that it's there, therefore it can't clean the hive, is how I want to say it, okay? So what they're finding is that these mites are in existence like in the tens of thousands, whereas, you know, in, in, a, in a harmonious hive, you'll have smaller numbers, like less than 100. So it is possible to live in, together without wreaking havoc. And I share that because this is what's happening within the human body is we have these bacteria and viruses and funguses, yeasts living in our bodies. And it's natural to have low levels of these microbes in our system. Therefore, when it's out of balance, the system, um, then you have these inc increasing levels and then you have susceptibility because again at when the body is weakened so to speak and out of balance it doesn't necessarily mean when you have an overactive immune system that the body's strong it actually means that the body has is out of balance and i say overactive immune system instead of autoimmune system because so many people are are exhibiting some level of autoimmune reaction, but they're not getting a diagnosis, yet they're still living with a lot of symptoms. And these are the folks that I'm saying that have an overactive immune system, but that doesn't necessarily mean, again, that the body's strong. It means the body is out of balance. And when that's the case, yeast will go up and um, it, makes, it makes you more susceptible. So therefore, what it may, and how this goes is like, just think about it. You have higher levels of yeast. What is the body going to do? It's going to kick into action because it's, it's on, on the move to eliminate the yeast. And the way this occurs is that there's, it's stressful to the system. Therefore, and I've talked about this in prior videos, What's happening is when the body is stressed at the cellular level, the chemistry is redirected for survival. It's not a thriving environment any longer. It's a surviving environment. And when that happens, there's shifts. And in those shifts, our digestive systems are um, reduced. Our ability to digest the macronutrients um, is altered because the body cannot distinguish the difference between running from a, a, a vicious dog and yeast. It just knows stress and therefore it responds accordingly. This is the reason why the digestive system goes out of whack. So now you have that. So what's altered now, when that occurs, now you've created an, alter, an alteration in the hormonal system because things are being redirected, okay? So therefore, um, hormones, the hormonal system has changed and it will activate an immune reaction, hence histamine. Okay, so this is, and, and so now what are the symptoms really the result of? Are they the result of high histamine or histamine intolerance or are they the result of yeast levels? Um, this is the part that I um, really work um, strongly with, with my clients. And then I'm teaching in my on my Patreon um, website, which is where you can subscribe and for like as minimal as three dollars a month, and get a lot of information that would actually help expand on what I'm talking about here. And depending on at what level you would like to contribute, you could actually get more specific information for yourself. But that aside. Um, what ends up happening, like I said, is with high levels of yeast, your histamine levels go up. And so truthfully, is it histamine um, intolerance or is it a yeast issue that's causing your insomnia and your fatigue and your pain, you know, and so on and so forth? We can get real particular about the types of chemicals that would be indicated and it's such a thing, you know, like for, for instance, fatigue, you know, we can talk about adrenal fatigue or we can talk about low iron. I mean, we can, we can look at all of these things and we can get very specific or we can kind of back up. And, um, every time I do this, I have to tell you the YouTube always gives me some really strange snapshots that, I'm, that I can use for my cover shot. So I should probably behave myself <laughs> anyway. Um, 
we can get real we can start to try and get picky about chemical the chemicals or we can kind of back out and really work with the entire system is really what i'm getting at however for the purpose of this video like i said with regards to yeast i'm more concerned about the use of essential oils in the area of yeast, especially for folks who aren't aware that they may actually have yeast in the tissues. Maybe they don't have it in the mouth or, you know, in the um, the in, in the lady parts or anywhere else. Maybe there's no indication that there's yeast, but yet it's still there. And um, what ends up happening is people are using essential oils and sometimes they'll walk away, they'll put them aside and think they've just wasted their money because it's not working. Um, I've actually had people tell me that they um, feel like they've hurt themselves through the use of essential oils. And it just, it just hurts. It just really hurts me to hear that because the essential oils aren't, I mean, there is, this is where, because I just have such a great respect and love for them, I guess is what I want to say. I've spent a great deal of time, you know, over 30 years coming to understand oils. And so when somebody says that they've hurt themselves with them, that's the last thing I want. And at the same time, it's the reason why I advocate for less is more. There is a possibility of doing absolutely too much, and especially if you're using an, a blend that may have an oil in it that is um, has a high antifungal activity, um, or if you're actually using a specific oil because you've heard it might be good for you or good for a specific symptom. Um, what we really need to do is begin to focus more so on the targeting the entire system, not a symptom. So I'm going to list out the oils that are um, known to um, re trigger the release of yeast from the system that could actually cause a flare of some degree and leave you feeling like you've actually caused harm to your system through the use of oils. Those would be um, peppermint, tea tree, lemongrass, um, and dill and German chamomile. Now with the exception of dill, I don't know too many people who use dill, but those other ones are really, really common. And I, I recognize the fact that a lot of people already know that tea tree is good for um, antifungal. Um, I, you know, <clears throat> there's no reason why that wouldn't be the case, but at the same time, I'm just wanting to emphasize that here. And other ones, the other ones are fairly common. Like I said, with the exception of the dill, I don't know too many people who use that one, but I just wanted to include it in this little list. I also want to emphasize the fact that a lot of oils, as I mentioned in my prior video, have antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal at some level. So even though the ones that I've listed, depending on the combination and depending on specifically what's going on in your body, you could actually trigger a release of, ye of yeast. And, and especially in the event of systemic stress. So again, this doesn't have to be a mental emotional stress. This could actually be just environmental stressors. And let's be real we're all exposed to environmental stressors. So essentially we're all living with cellular stress and being able to relieve that is essential for overcoming any kind of health condition, whether you're dealing with a mental health issue, uh, chronic illness, auto, like an autoimmune, if you're dealing with you know things, even with addiction, in order to overcome this, in order to recover, it's essential to begin to relieve the cellular stress, because another thing that occurs besides digestion is it stagnates the lymph system. And when the lymph system stagnates and you're using an oil that is, um, that is recognized for um, being an antifungal or having a high antifungal activity, you will push it through the skin. Um, that's just because the skin is the largest organ and so you end up developing a rash. And so this is the reason why it's, again, essential. Making sure that you get body work 
to help move the lymph system that you have some degree of physical activity throughout every day even if it's just minimal and this is the reason why yoga is really good because it actually it, it, can, it doesn't require a lot and you can actually begin to move the, the lymph system you want to make sure that you get plenty of fluids and you can even look up videos I've seen them I've shared them with some of my clients some of the massage therapists actually do share how to do lymphatic drainage for yourself so you could look that up and actually help begin to move that as well so um, these are essential for beginning to flush the system and again it's also important that if you're looking to do this that you begin to include um, ways of protecting the kidneys because to dump a lot of toxins or in this case microbes into the system will actually make you sick even if you are moving the lymph because you got to protect the kidneys so again this is the reason why I say you know it's really important to pay attention to what you're using and understand the effects that it is, can have and why you or somebody else may think that they've caused harm to themselves that they've actually hurt themselves that's that's been a phrase that's been used with me several times that somebody felt like they hurt themselves because they had include oils into um, their protocol um, I'm about to write on a little bit more on why it's so important to begin reducing the amount I've talked about it here but I think it's really necessary to include that um, until we become more specific um, again it's also a good reason to use individual um, oils um, individual um, herbs and again I want to also clarify that herbs and oils are very different they have very distinct um, effects on the body that they're not that one's different than the other and um, so using um, the minimal amount is your best option and like I said I'm going to write more about on overwhelm system overwhelm system overload <laughs> Um, but in the meantime, please use caution with your oils. Um, as I said, yeast and bacteria and viruses are living in our systems at all times because we are nature and we do coexist, whether we think so or not. We are coexisting with all organisms and it's when the system is out of balance that we become, um, we fall victim to the pop higher populations of bacteria virus and um, yeast in our system so let me know if you have any questions feel free to take a look at the patreon membership because it might actually be something that you would be interested in i recently just posted something on um hypomyelination which is the demyelination of the myelin sheath which is leading to neurodegenerative diseases and how that is actually um, how our limiting diets are beginning to impact us on a long-term basis so and that's my main goal when I talk about anything it's not just short-term because right now the way we approach health is the short-term relief and while I completely respect and appreciate short-term relief, we have to pay attention to the long-term effects. What are we doing long-term? And on that note, using an essential oil, I want to be uh, responsible and say that when you use an essential oil that is, you know, on a one, you know, once a month basis or, you know, just an occasional, you know, like an acute care kind of thing, that's not your that's not the problem it's the ongoing use that um, I'm concerned with because there's a lot of people that are using oils on an ongoing basis and being able to number one change them up and understand what the long-term effects are because a lot of our essential oils are now being included in a lot of body care products and so forth so knowing what you're using on a long you know um, on an ongoing basis and the long-term effects is really what i'm here for so let me know again if you have any questions i'd love to see you over on patreon and i really appreciate you watching no matter what thanks for being a part of my journey and um have a really beautiful day and peace be with you